Hi there, everybody. My name is Katie. Um, in case you didn't know, I run an animal rescue in Arizona called Kennels of Compassion Animal Rescue. Um, basically, right now what I'm doing, I've decided that I'm going to start making little YouTube videos. I'm going to put them on my blog as well, which is uh, might be where you're seeing this. Uh, either way, what they are, I'm going to do a lot of pro pit bull type stuff, things that people think are facts but are actually myths, training tips, um, just kind of things like that, I guess, educational videos. Sorry, I got my, my baby boy right here trying to play with me, of course. But yeah, uh, what this video is going to be about is actually things that you can give your dog that are healthy, things you might not know about. Uh, some of them are probably going to be things you have heard of before, and some might be things that you have not heard of. So I'm going to start it with cooked chicken. Uh, you've probably heard this before. A lot of people do something called a raw meat diet. Um, what that is is literally raw meat, you know, steaks, things like that. Now with the chicken, it's actually best to cook it just because I'm sure all of us know you want to cook your chicken as well as you can. Um, chicken has a lot of bacteria in it. It's very easy to get sick from it. So I highly, highly suggest you never give your dog raw chicken. But cooked chicken is great. You know, cook it like you would cook it for yourself. Make sure there's no pink, things like that. Obviously, don't put any flavors on it. You know, you don't need salt, pepper. You know, it's not for you. It's for your dog. So try and keep that in mind. Also, something cool about chicken is if you're having financial difficulties, chicken's really good for that. It's very cheap. Um, if you're somebody who does not like to buy your dog, Iams dog food, for example, you know, sorry to throw them under the bus, but a lot of people think that Iams and pedigree and stuff like that are good for your dogs. But if you look in the ingredients, you want to make sure that byproduct is not in there. So if you see three ingredients in, you've got cornmeal, um, chicken byproducts, stuff like that. That's something that you don't want to get your dog. Um, again, if you're in financial difficulty, sometimes you have to. It's not going to kill your dog, so you don't have to worry about that. But uh, again, if you're somebody who likes to feed your dog really well, something that is great and cost-efficient is chicken. Um, another thing that's really good is salmon. It is very good for their health. Um, I'm sorry, for, well, obviously for their health, but for their coat. It'll actually keep it really soft, really shiny, so that's really nice. I've actually noticed that with eggs as well. Um, if you want to just crack the egg, pour the raw egg yolk on their food kind of make it a little bit wetter. Um, I actually put wet food in my dog's dry food. Uh, it actually makes them sick to eat dry food only. So anyways, eggs is a really good thing. You can scramble it up like you would for yourself. Again, keep in mind this is not for you. It is for your dog. So no pudding, salt, pepper, that kind of stuff in there. Um, now something else that's good that you might not have heard of is green beans. They're actually very filling for your dog and for yourself. And they're actually a really, really good snack for your dog. I wouldn't recommend them as your dog's meal, of course. If you now if you want to mix that in with the, you know, chicken and salmon and put some green beans in there, that's a great idea. Again, it's filling, so you don't have to put a lot in. Otherwise, cook up some green beans or even some raw ones. Just throw it to your dog as a snack like you would a regular treat. Could you stop for five seconds? <laughs> you will not stop. All right, another good thing is cheese. Now, with this one, you have to be careful. You want to make sure do your dog is not lactose intolerant. If your dog does get sick from the cheese, take it to the vet immediately. Uh, just like humans, some allergic reactions are different. Some are worse, some are not severe, things like that. So if you ever notice your dog does get sick from the cheese, your dog is most likely lactose intolerant. So try and avoid anything with milk, you know, dairy, that kind of stuff. Um, another thing that's good for your dog would be yogurt, actually. Um, you obviously want to make sure there are no additives, no sugar, no artificial flavors, things like that. You want to get the yogurts that have uh, what's called active or live bacteria in them. Um, now, a lot of people actually don't know that yogurt has live bacteria or live, um, shoot, the words escaping me, quarters or something. Oh my god, that's embarrassing. Okay, well, let's pretend I just didn't say that. Anyways, what the live bacteria means, um, inside of our digestive tract is live bacteria. There's good bacteria, there's bad bacteria. Just like good germs, bad germs. So if without the bacteria, yogurt would not be yogurt. It would literally be milk. Um, yeah, they could make it without the bacteria, but they would be adding a lot of very strange chemical leaky type things to it and you would not want to eat yogurt like that. So make sure your yogurt and your dog's yogurt has live bacteria, active bacteria, things like that. Or it might be a word that starts with a C that has escaped me. Um, but anyways, yeah, it's why yogurt's good for our digestive tracts. It's why it, you know, tries, it makes you regular and things like that. Now, another thing that's good for your dog is oatmeal. For this, you always want to make sure you cook it. Do not give them raw oatmeal flakes. That is not good for them. Again, cook the oatmeal. Uh, make it like you would regularly make it for yourself. Just don't throw anything in it for the millionth time. Um, I know I shouldn't have to say that over and over, but uh, you never know. 
So, yeah, cook the oatmeal. Again, give them regular oatmeal. Don't give them the cinnamon brown sugar oatmeal, the one with the little dinosaur candy eggs in it. You know, nothing like that. Yes, Walter, I see you, buddy. I think he's jealous. Uh, now, oatmeal is actually really good for senior dogs as well, so that's just something to keep in mind. Uh, something you might not know is carrots. A lot of dogs actually surprisingly like carrots, too. It's really good for them, and the best part is it cleans their teeth. It gets the gunk off of their teeth, so that's awesome. helps you so you don't have to actually brush your dog's teeth, which is pretty nice because uh, most dogs do not like to have their teeth brushed. Uh, now just three more things. We've got apple slices. Also cleans your dog's teeth. And what's nice is it also makes your dog's breath a lot more fresher. I'm not going to promise that your dog's breath will smell good, but at least it'll smell a lot better. Now one of the last things is pumpkins. A lot of people don't know this, but pumpkins is actually very good for your dog. Um, and it can actually help with digestive problems as well. So if your dog has troubles with that, pumpkin is great. Uh, it's you know, Halloween time right now, so this is a great time when you're making your jack-o'-lantern. Scoop out some of the pumpkin for your dog. And then lastly is a more common one. It is peanut butter. Um, some people don't know peanut butter is good for their dogs, but it actually is. <laughs> the best part is it's really good um, for keeping the dog busy. You can just put it in. What I'm putting it in right now is actually an old bone. Um, all the meat's been taken off. Um, another good thing that I have also is a Kong. Uh, Kongs are on the more expensive lev le uh, level. The reason for that, Kongs last a very long time. Uh, the Kong that we have is actually over a decade, over 10 years old. And we still have it. It's got some scratches, maybe like a little itty bitty puncture wound, but nothing that actually even goes through it. And that's with having UKC registered, massive pit bulls, a German Shepherd, and a bunch of other dogs. So they really do last. I really, really do recommend them. But um, otherwise, you can actually go to the supermarket. Um, what I have here in Arizona is fries, and you can actually get these bones. They'll have the marrow inside. Sometimes they'll have a very thin layer of, of a meat on the outside. Um, generally costs anywhere from 3 to $10. Depends on the pack you get, and it usually goes by weight like it would any other type of meat you would get in the meat section. Um, sometimes it's actually in the frozen section for some reason. I'm not sure why, but uh, that's what my fries recently started doing. So look in the meat section first. You know, it's really intended for humans. You're supposed to put it in your soup, I believe. I don't know because I've never done it. But um, yeah, they're great for dogs. They're really healthy too. So let's give Walter this and uh, keep him occupied that way. All right, I was going to say, please take it. <laughs> All right, guys, well, I'm going to go give Walter some attention because uh, he seems pretty deprived of love right now. So hopefully this video helps you out. Um, hopefully this will give you some ideas of things you can do for your dog. And um, if you have any questions, please feel free to ask me. Or you, the best way to con contact me, actually, is on my Tumblr account. It's kennelsofcompassion.tumblr.com. If you don't have a Tumblr, you can leave a comment, and I'll try my best to remember to check it. That's it, everybody. You and your dog have a great rest of your night.